Hopefully. Opening uh, up. If, we, if the, we win those tickets. This just changed everything that I was about. I was about to eviscerate this card, as I have been for two weeks. I am now in a, a great mood. Yeah, I'm now in a fantastic mood. And opening up the UFC Vegas 91 fight card, we have a spectacular matchup between Mahashete and Gabriel Benitez. Mahashete is nine and three in his career, three and two in his last five. And even though he's coming off back-to-back losses, he's still very young at only 24. And he's taking on the always durable, the always ready-to-fight Gabriel Benitez. He's 23-11 and 11 overall, 2-3 and three in his last five, coming off a submission loss to Jim Miller just a few months ago. This is an interesting fight. The, the theme of this card is back in the win column or back out of the UFC. That is this card. There's a lot of people on this card fighting for their jobs. And that opens up the door to some exciting finishes. Remember the narrative when they upped the UFC 300 bonuses to $300,000 and people were like, bet the unders. This card has a similar vibe where they're not fighting for the bonus. They're literally fighting to stay in the UFC. Both Gabriel and Mahashete probably have some extra pressure on them. And it could be a good matchup because Mahashete is still very young. He's only 24. But he's composed. He takes his time. He's a fun, creative striker. He will hang out for a firefight or he'll stay on the outside and do a technical kickboxing match. Isn't 24 match. years old kind of surprising? I don't know why Meaning, I thought that he was like a, a veteran or like a 28, 29. He's been 30. fighting in the UFC for a few years and he composes himself like a veteran. Like yeah, he's not he's like a yeah, sloppy doofus. Yeah. Like he... Takes his time and does things. He will get into a firefight, though. What was that? I said he'll get into a firefight. I didn't say anything. I didn't. You said something about... Because I can kind of do whatever the fuck I want now, right? (laughs) I can kind (laughs) of... I'm not big on traveling, so... (laughs) Oh, no. I have to stay home? No. You know what's um, funny is when, and this is a, a little bit off topic, but it's the same very topic. Off topic. Uh, I, 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 when I was texting Tiffany because I let her know about it, like the dates and stuff, just to make sure nothing was going on. Obviously, because I, you know, I think ahead with that type of stuff. And I was like, I, I'm not buying his. I told her, I was like, I'm not buying his flights because I don't know when he wants to arrive, and I don't know how many seats to buy. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, did she even get that joke? Oh, she. Th- I think she thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> I bet she did. She still laughs at that guy that said in the live chat that I was built like a turkey. She still laughs at that to this day. Either way, Mahashete is young. He can be exciting or he can be technical. If you stay in his face, if you back him up, that is where he struggles. He does very well moving forward, not as well backing up. He is coming off of a TKO loss to a very dangerous Vaishlev Borshev striker. He's taking on Gabriel Benitez. Gabriel Benitez is a very good kickboxer. Specifically, phenomenal kicks. We've talked about this many times over, but if you're new here, Gabriel Benitez has been heralded as having the heaviest, hardest leg kicks at American Kickboxing Academy. And this is a gym that includes heavyweights like Cain Velasquez, includes middleweights like Luke Rockhold, then multiple champions, Daniel Cormier. And everybody said Gabriel Benitez is the hardest kicker in that gym. Take down offense. What? I've never been there. Okay. Takedown defense is at 55%. Takedown offense is at 50%. But he does want to keep fights on their feet. And he does want to try to out-dog you, out-technique you if he can in a technical kickboxing match. He has two takedowns in 14 fights. And that's because he has fallen in love with the knockout. He does have good BJJ. He does have decent wrestling if he needs it, but he doesn't even attempt anymore. He knocked a few people out, and that's what his career is now. I got to lean Mahashete here, but it is very low confidence. Gabriel Benitez is the better fighter. He just flat out is. And he did look really bad in his last fight against Jim Miller, but we know that happens sometimes, right? He came off a long layoff, and there are plenty of times where somebody comes off a long layoff, gets the crap beaten out of them, and then in their next fight, after they dusted off those cobwebs, in the next fight, they're closer to their old form. Mahashete is going to be the pick because he is younger, because he should be faster, and he could fight technical or a brawl. But Gabriel is the better fighter, and I'm just fading him at this point because of that last fight. But I can't bet on Mahashete here, even though he is the pick. What do you think, Jakey Boy? Yeah, I don't like better fighter, but I don't think it's by much if it is. You know, I like Mahashete, and a lot of times what we talk about is these young guys, they improve 
so, so fast. And he's already, like you said, a very poised guy when he's in there. He had an issue with Slava, but a lot of people are going to have an issue fi yeah. fighting Slava. I mean, Slava's a very good fighter, but he had an issue kind of hanging out in the pocket a little bit too much with those experienced strikers that can throw extended combinations. You just don't want to do that, and that happens. Obviously, in the fight previous to that, he just kind of ran into a buzzsaw and Rafa Garcia, or Rafa Garcia, and got taken down a bunch. But I like him in this fight, mostly because Mowgli, is, he, he's a tough dude. You mentioned the kicks. He's an experienced guy, but he is kind of what he is at this point. He was getting outboxed by Jim Miller, and I hate doing the MMA math, but Jim Miller kind of beat the shit out of him on the feet, and then he turned around and looked how bad Jim Miller looked against Bobby Green. And I'm not saying, you know, but I am kind of saying, you know, <laughs> you know, Machete should have the striking enough to get to a guy like Mowgli. Mowgli doesn't really react very well to getting strike, to getting pressure. He kind of just kind of turtles up. And even when he has that high guard, Machete is one of those guys that can really kind of sit on something and split the guard. That may matter if you have your hands up versus some people. And I think Machete can kind of do that, walk him down. He's a tough kid. Obviously, he got knocked out by Slava, but, you know, that kind of happens sometimes uh, against experienced people. Uh, I like Machete. It's probably a little bit overpriced minus 200 because he is a young guy he's coming off losses um but you know I, I he should win this fight it's one of those he should but i'm not gonna be cra especially smaller cage it's weird i'm not gonna be crazy surprised if Mowgli kind of pulls us out but i think machete is definitely the pick here yeah i mean I, I agree with you i i'm airing on the side of age essentially i'm going with the younger i don't even want to say more durable because he can be finished but i'm going with the younger faster guy that is probably looking forward in his career instead of looking back, where Gabriel Benitez is just, you know, I think going through the motions here, trying to finish as strong as he possibly can. Both of us on the Mahachete side, I'm not going to bet on him, but are you going to spend the $8,400 in DraftKings? Yeah, there could be some value there. Yeah. I mean, he, could, I mean he, he can come through and get a fucking under a minute finish. I mean, it, but it could also, he could take his time and drag it out. So it's a, a multiple lineup for sure, I would say. It's an it's an interesting price point in DraftKings because he opened in the betting odds as a three to one favorite. He's basically a two to one favorite now in a betting odds, but DraftKings priced him at eighty four hundred dollars, where eighty one hundred is even money. So DraftKings didn't price him as if he was a two to one favorite. So you are getting some value there when it translates to uh, fantasy. So I am probably somebody said it's eighty eight hundred in DraftKings. So I probably typed that wrong, mm. um, which is real stupid. Yep, I did type it wrong. So are you going to spend the $8,800 on Mahachete? All of a sudden, um, not such good value, is it? Probably not. I was, misled. <laughs> yeah. I was misled. I was misled as well. Whoever does these graphics needs to get their shit together, especially because... I was about to I don't brag think that, about I think the graphics. person that does the graphics should... I mean, there's no way they should go to a UFC event. Well, I mean, why would they be rewarded with, you know, insane... I'm with you. And I was about to brag about the graphics because the guy who did the graphics has gone above and beyond. If you go to the UFC website and you click on events, it will have the backdrop to all of these events. But it has the fighter's images on it and there's like text. It's kind of a mess. But the person who does the graphics went in there removed all of those things, took the time to make these graphics not only have all the incredible detail that you see, but also visually look as close to the actual UFC product as possible. Even put the rolling banner on the top for UFC Fight Night. And then that same idiot typos the DraftKings price. $8,800 for Mahachete, probably not worth that money. But if you do want to check out the DraftKings Optimizer, the DraftKings Plays, and everything else, we want picks.com. Click Become a Member. It is only $10 an entire month. And we did just have somebody DM us on the Twitter talking about, I just won this $20,000 DraftKings ticket. Thank you so much for the tools, the insight, and everything else that Premium offers. I will tweet that ticket out a little bit later. We want picks.com. Click Become a Member. Before you go, let me give you $50. Anybody who goes to wewantpicks.com slash bets and signs up with any one of our affiliate partners gets $50 as a thank you. Use the link, sign up, make a deposit. We send you 50 bucks as a thank you.